Hello everybody, it's Julian or Flow Graphics here and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today I've got a really cool tutorial. I'm going to teach you how to get an ordinary photo of your car. It doesn't have to be your car, just a car um, and make it go from this into this. Um, it's super easy, it's, it's really basic and it just looks so awesome. Like you can just get the most ordinary, just like you literally just go outside and just take a boring ordinary photo of your car and you can make it look like an awesome like car photo shoot mid-action shot and it just it looks sick so let's just get straight into it it's super easy um i'll delete this bam and then we'll start with our regular photo this is my car um this was just a photo i just took i just stand there and i just looked at my car i'm like bam i didn't really think much about it i just took a pretty ordinary photo um and then using this effect we're going to make it just really pop and really look awesome so the first thing we're going to do is add all those cool blurring effects. You can see there was motion blur on the car, the wheels were blurring, and the whole car just like looked like it was in motion. Really, really easy to do this. So what we're gonna do is just hit Control J on our car layout. So obviously you can just drag into Photoshop, uh, whatever car, whatever photo you have, just drag it straight in and just open up your layers panel. So once we hit Control J, what we're doing is we're duplicating uh, that layer. So once we've done that, I'm just gonna go and make a new layer. The new layer icon's just on the bottom right hand of the screen, looks like a little sort of page flipped over. Um, and I'm gonna make that new layer in between those two layers that I had originally. Now I'm gonna hit G on my keyboard to go to my paint bucket and just whatever color you happen to have, most likely gonna be white, just click on the screen and just fill that layer with white. You can turn off that top layer and then you can just double check if it filled it or not. The reason we're doing this is because what we're gonna do is mask out our car um, so we can just have the car in front without being blurred and then we can blur the background. Um, and we need some sort of solid layer, some sort of solid color behind that layer so we can tell what's masked and what's not. And this will become really obvious in a second. So what we want to do is just select that top layer. Just go to select and then go to select and mask. Otherwise the shortcut is alt control R. Now in this panel, you'll see um, whatever color your background was, that will sort of be a little bit transparent over your picture here. Now this is just sort of normal brush tool commands. You can just use your bracket keys next to the P key and your keyboard to make your brush bigger and smaller. And you'll notice you'll just be able to click and drag and it'll start to select whatever you're doing. Um, so I can just start to click and drag over my car and it will automatically select portions of my car and detect where the edges are. This tool is absolutely amazing. I'd say it's definitely the best tool for selecting things like this. Um, and if it doesn't get areas sort of perfect to the first go, don't worry, we'll go back and fix things. Like there, you can see picked up a bit of the grass, that's okay. We'll just continue to go over our whole car until basically almost the entire car um, has sort of like a selection around it. Um, and if there are any areas that hasn't picked up, just, just go over them again. Um, and then there we go. So that's a good starting point. So now I can just hit Control Plus and zoom in a bit more. Um, now if I hit Alt, it will do the opposite. It will actually subtract the selection. So now I can go over the areas that have gone sort of too much over and start to subtract the selection back a little bit and just sort of refine it. And then if I want to go back in, I can do that and then just regularly, just, you know, standard regular click. Um, and we'll do that. And then I'll hold Alt cut that back and you can sort of, this will really just be as good as you want it to be. Um, I suggest in this point, just sort of do the best you can. Um, if it doesn't look fantastic, you know, it, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Though The more time you spend on this, the better, you know, your final image will look. Um, that's just sort of the way it works. Um, but yeah, I suggest you to sort of, you know, try your hardest. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's just something to remember. It doesn't have to be dead on perfect. Just sort of get it as good as you can. Um, so now I'll cut in underneath the car here. You can see it's picking up some bits of the side skirting there that I don't really want. So I'll cut them back now like this. Um, another thing you can do is also you can, you know, um, sort of manually go in and just do like little areas if you want. Like I could zoom right in, make my brush a little bit smaller and then just sort of get right in there. And sort of the smaller your brush is, the less it will sort of do to automatically detect. It will just sort of paint in what you've selected. Um, so I'll make sure it gets this wheel. You definitely want your wheels in it. We'll add the, the second blur, like sort of that rotational blur afterwards. So just make sure you get your, your wheels fully in a selection. Um, if it's having trouble sort of selecting areas that you want, um, you can just tap instead of, instead of actually clicking and dragging. If you just do little taps, it will just sort of cut out those little bits that you're tapping and nothing else. Um, so now what I can do here is yeah, cut in this little wheel arch and I'll just do some little taps. And I'll just do some little taps to just sort of bring that back a little bit. So we get this tire um, nice and in there. And all of this we can fix up afterwards anyway. So I just suggest get it as good as you can. Um, if it's not absolutely perfect, you know, don't threat. 
will fix it up anyway. It's a lot easier to sort of fix it up once the blur's already added and you have a better idea of what exactly, you know, it looks like and, and if you can sort of get away with things or not or if you'll need to um or if you'll need to touch them up. So what I'll do is just cut around here. And look, I think that's pretty good. I think that's a pretty good starting point. Maybe I'll just really quickly um cut off some of the hood here and then some of this section here like that. So we'll just run over that again and bam, I think that looks pretty good. We probably won't even really need to touch that up. So now I can just hit OK and you'll see now you have a floating white car. <laughs> um, so yeah, don't worry about if it looks a bit dodgy around the edges, that's fine. So now what we can do is just turn off that white layer. We'll, don't delete it, just turn it off for now in case you want to go back into the selection and, and change it later. And now what we're going to do is add the blur. So selecting back on our original bottom layer, what I'm going to go is go to filter on the top bar. Uh, and then whoops, and then we'll go to blur gallery and then we'll go to path blur. Now the reason I'm just not doing this, a simple just motion blur is because this path blur is just, it's way better. Um, you can do a lot more. If your car was, for example, on a road that was curved or something like that, um, you could actually make the blur of the photo match that curve. It just looks a lot more realistic and a lot cooler. So it might automatically sort of bring in this arrow for you. Otherwise you can just click and drag and you can create uh, a new sort of anchor point and then you can just hit escape and then um, you can basically move the midpoint of the anchor to sort of create that path. Um, I'll just control Z back and just um, remove that. You can also hit it, just delete when you've selected one of these um, anchor points to delete it. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna select this one here and I'm just gonna bend it a little bit so it's sort of straight at the front and then it curves around a bit towards the back and I think that will look pretty good um, just to, to sort of match the, you know, the way the car's going. Obviously you sort of wanna make it match what direction the car's going. I think that's pretty um, important. <laughs> so I think that looks pretty good there. And then you can just sort of adjust the speed to whatever you think looks good. Uh, maybe around, I'd say around 50% is probably gonna look good. Um, anything sort of towards like 30, 20%, it just looks a bit silly. You don't really get that whole motion blur effect, but upwards of sort of 50% is when you start to really get the effect and it starts to look cool. So uh, I'd say around, maybe we'll do 60% for this one. Um, and then we'll just hit enter um, and you can see, we'll hit okay on the top there. Um, and then yeah, that will apply the blur to that bottom layer. So now we have that cool sort of motion blur and it looks like our car's traveling, but we need the wheels to move, um, that's important. So what I'm gonna do is just hit control plus and zoom in a little bit here. And I'm going to select the wheels. So I'm gonna select back on the top layer, the one that I masked before. I'm gonna go to my elliptical marquee tool. You can just hit M on your keyboard and you can just click and hold on the marquee tool and just go to the elliptical one. So now if I start in the center of my wheel, I can just hold Alt and then click and drag out. The reason I'm holding Alt is because if you hold Alt, it will make it from the center outwards, um, which is what we want. And I basically just want to select a little circle around the edge of my tire. And then I just want to hit Control J, which will make a new layer from that. Now what I want to do is you could use a layer mask or you could just simply erase. I I'd honestly just suggest you erase it because it just takes a second. And you just want to erase any bits of grass or bits of the tire that you might not have wanted to select. Um, that looks pretty good like that. And then we could just go to filter or blur gallery and then spin blur. Spin blur is absolutely amazing. It's a really cool tool. Um, so it will just sort of spawn you in this window here. Um, I don't know why I said spawn, <laughs> that's weird, but it will load you into this window here. Um, and then you can basically click and drag this circle to wherever your wheel is. And obviously just sort of line up the center point of the circle to the center point of your wheel. I suggest not totally blurring the wheel out to like over 100 per, 100 degrees because, you know, it look cool. You get this full circle effect, but I think it looks a bit nicer if you just do a bit of blur and not go sort of too crazy with it. Maybe something around 10% or so will look good. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stick with that and then I'm going to hit OK. Uh, and I think that looks, that looks pretty sweet, actually. That's pretty much the effect we're going for. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to this back wheel. So now I'm just going to go back to my elliptical marquee mark tool, hold Alt, drag a circle out, hit Control J to make a duplicate of that layer. Uh, I can just hit E to go to my eraser and then just erase some of the, you know, the black on the edge of the tire and erase some of the grass here. Um, and then I can go to filter, blur gallery, and then spin blur. And then I'll drag this circle down, meeting the center of sort of the hub here. Um, and then it'll automatically keep that sort of blur angle that I used last time. Um, I might make it just a little bit less, maybe around 12%. And we'll hit OK. And that's going to look pretty good right there. Wait for that blur to kick in. Um, obviously, yeah, make sure you sort of get the mask right. Um, as you can see here 
Oh, there's a little bit of tread here that didn't quite get blurred. I think that should look fine, That you know, it's not really a problem, but if you want to spend a bit more time, you could sort of perfect that. Um, and now what we'll do is basically just tidy up the edge of the car. You can see there's bits of grass on the bottom and also another thing which is quite important is that the windows, the background isn't blurred in the windows, we just want to touch up all of that now. So what we can do is go back to this top layer that we added the mask to that the car's on and I can just hit control plus to zoom in a bit here and because we used the select a mask tool um, it makes it a layer mask. So now we can go back and sort of edit this layer mask. So I'm going to click on the layer mask. When you click on a layer mask, it should automatically make your color swatches uh, black and white. So if you don't know how a layer mask works, it's basically just an eraser. Uh, black erases, white fills in. So you can hit X on your keyboard to swap around those two colors. You can see them swapping whenever I hit X. So if I just hit X again to make the black on top, and I just use my normal brush tool, I might put my hardness down a little bit, um, I can just sort of paint away the bottom of the tire here just to get rid of that grass um, because essentially what I'm doing is just making the tire blurred um, so I can't see that grass. Um, I think that looks pretty good. And then I can do some more around the front here and then I'll do some more around the tire here. I just don't want to see that sort of grass. We'll get rid of that. We'll blur some of the tire in there and then even in here in this little part here we can sort of fix up this. Um, and if you didn't like the tire, maybe you could blow that out, out too. I think that's probably going to look fine, to be honest. Um, and then now what you can do is maybe drag up the hardest a little bit more to around 70%. And then just sort of go around the edge of the car and just make sure there's no sort of areas where... This is going to look a lot more obvious if there's sort of trees or foliage or anything like that. Sort of sort of quite detailed items in the background. And um, now what we sort of want to do is just sort of erase and fill in any areas around the car. And you can just hit X just to swap your selection to fill back in and then you can hit X again to start erasing. Um, so yeah, it shouldn't take, I think it's on a pretty good job like the mask that we did to begin with. Don't really have to do too much, it shouldn't take too long. And you can also hold shift and then just sort of click and it'll create um, lines from one point to another point which sort of saves a bit of time as well. So I was basically gonna keep holding shift and then just click around the car to just create some lines which will get rid of, I think there's grass on the bonnet looks pretty um, yuck. So we'll get rid of that. And I think that, I think that's it there. And you can see already we've got that effect and it looks really cool. Now to do with the actual grass and the windows and things, that's sort of up to you. What you could do is you could go into the windows where you can actually see through and then just add some blur to those parts. Honestly, what I think looks better is if you just blur out the whole windows. Um, so yeah, anything that's inside the window area, you just blur it out. I, I just, I don't know, I just think it looks a bit, it looks a bit better and it just sort of adds to the whole like sort of motion effect of the car. Um, so what I'll do is go in here and just cut into all these areas. And don't forget, you can just fill this in. You don't have to get it perfect the first time. You can erase back parts um, that you've blurred because it's a layer mask. That's what's so amazing about layer masks is I can go over that pole there and let's just sort of erase that whole pole and blur it out. And then once I've sort of filled out this whole window, then I can go back in and just paint that pole back in. Or I could just keep the pole out. It almost looks cooler just erasing that whole pole to begin with. <laughs> so I like the look of that. Um, and then, yeah, if it gets a little bit more complicated when you want to sort of get rid of the blurring um, in reflections, um, if the reflections are sort of side to side, it's not too bad. Like you can actually just sort of go over the reflections like this and just sort of blur them out and then they'll just look nice and shiny. As for the reflections, it's sort of up to you. You can just sort of trace over them and if the reflections are, you know, side to side, um, you can just sort of smooth them out a little bit um, and then you'll, you know, you'll get that whole motion blur effect. Um, this might not always work depending on what angle your car's at and just sort of what the reflections look like and all that. Um, yeah, it's up to you if you want to sort of blur them out. It can look, it can look really cool to be honest if you sort of... Um, do it you'll just have to be really sort of selective where you go and just go over the areas where there's not you know details and lines and things like that because it adds this really cool sort of metallic -y effect to the car um but you know that's up to you if you want to sort of add that or not um I, th I think i might even just take it out for now and then um if we want to you know, include anything else later we can so i'll just take all of that out so yeah there we have our car it's all blurred it's all looking pretty cool and then now i'm just going to do a few things just to touch up the colors and just make it look 
a bit cooler. So I'm just going to go into my adjustments panel. If you don't have your adjustments panel, you can just go to window adjustments to bring it up. And what I'm looking for is the selective color. Now this is really, really cool. Uh, make sure it's right at the top of all the layers. Um, and what we can do is go into our individual colors and sort of change their hue and their settings to make basically like a color correction. So I've got some trees in the back. The trees are mostly yellow and green. So I can just click on the little colors drop down tab here and I'll start with yellow. So I can change how much cyan is in the yellow. More cyan makes it more green, less cyan makes it more orange. I'm gonna make it more orange, I just think it looks cool. And you can see as I play around with these sort of sliders here, I'm basically just controlling how much of those colors are in um, that specific color range. So I can just go through all the different colors and if I wanna make the blue more intense, I can you know, add a lot of cyan to the blue. Um, and then I can add magenta if I want to be more of a purpley blue or more of sort of an aqua. Um, I can change the hue, how much blacks mixed in with the blue and all sorts of things. Um, and you can do this with your sort of blacks and grades and neutral colors. You can control sort of how much black is in it. Um, you can control sort of what your shadows look like. If I want the shadows to have a tinge of blue, you can do that. If you want the shadows to have a tinge of magenta, you can do that. If you go into your whites, you can control them as well. You can make the whites a touch more, you know, sort of bluey color or a bit more yellow. Um, it's really cool. I really, really like this tool. It's a lot of fun. Um, and you can just make some really cool looking stuff. Um, and then maybe we'll just go to brightness and contrast and just up the contrast ever so slightly. And there, it, you know, that was really that simple. Um, we just made, you know, an image that looked pretty ordinary and then we just made it look awesome. Like it looks like a full on photo shoot for a car, like it's from a magazine or something. And the, the photo we started with was just super basic, super ordinary, nothing special at all. So yeah, it's not that hard to do. Pretty much anyone can do this. Um, you, you don't even really need to use Photoshop prior, to be honest. Um, if you just follow what I said, you shouldn't really have too many troubles. Um, but yeah, if you have any future ideas or anything you'd like me to cover in videos, be sure to let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear all of your feedback. Um, pretty much, all, I'd say 50% of the tutorials I make are based on, on, on all of your feedback, um, which is really important. So let me know if you want me to make a video and I'll definitely make it. Um, so yeah, I hope you have an amazing day, everybody. It's been Julian or Flow Graphics here. See ya.